Hello YouTube and welcome back to the channel outside the target demographic. Today I'm going to be showing you guys my CyberTool 34. Let's get started. So this is a Victorinox CyberTool M or a CyberTool 34 because there are 34 tools on board. This one is of special importance to me. This is the first Swiss Army knife I've ever purchased. This was purchased in 2005, which was the year I graduated high school. It was purchased in my favorite German city of Rotenburg ob der Tauber. My father being United States Air Force, we were stationed over in Germany. And um, the same day that I purchased this Victorinox was a Nightwish concert, which is my favorite band. Would recommend you should look them up after this video. But uh, this is a 17-year-old model that you're looking at. And I would like to think that it's held up pretty good. So let's go ahead and look through it. We've got all sorts of scratches from use. The blade is still very, very sharp. Um, all of the springs are still sprung. Don't believe I've had any issues with this one. I have sent it into Victorinox once for them to... Uh, resharpen some of the tools and to oil it and lube it a little bit but shows almost two decades worth of service on it i think that's really cool so this knife is no longer in my edc rotation due to um its sentimental value again uh been with me since high school, followed me through my biomed school where I learned to work on medical equipment, followed me into my internship where I was able to carry it around the hospital, even though it's a scary knife, and uh, is now sometimes rotated in and out of use as I'm working still in the medical field. So this is a bit of a heirloom. Um, we have the weight here, you're looking about 50 to 55 grams, depending on if my scale wants to read accurately or not. I'm gonna roll in a tube of chapstick so you guys who don't own a 91 millimeter knife will know what we're looking at here. Pretty reasonably sized, I think. That is the cuckoo clock, also from Germany. Everyone should own one. So we can go through some of the tools here. As a 91 millimeter, we have the large blade, which is going to be just shy of three inches long and then maybe uh, two and a half inches of actual edge. Still sharp. We have the little blade. Has a little bit more use on it. This one's going to be um, about an inch and a half of usable edge. Next up, we have the scissors. Spring is still good. These scissors are fantastic. This is almost like a laminated cardstock. Cuts through them real good, even at the very edge. Cuts nice and clean, nice and sharp. Um, I, I think these are the best in the business, best as far as multi-tool scissors go. Next up, we have the pliers. Now I find these very useful for uh, precision stuff more than removing nuts and bolts and all. You would probably um, lean more Leatherman for that. But you have a spring-loaded action here. You have precise cuts that lead into a more aggressive cut. You have a wire cutter. Uh, let's see right there in the claw. You have a crimper here. So we got a couple tools on there. Um, again, I find them more precision pliers than uh, dedicated pliers, but found many a use for those. We have the combination tool, flathead, cap lifter, wire stripper. It has a 90 degree lock and a 180 degree lock. Man. That is a 20 year old Victorinox and you can still see and hear that spring action. Fantastic. 
Uh, we also have a multi-tool here. It is a smaller flathead with a can opener. Those are usually pretty standard. But the reason this is the cyber tool is because of the cyber tool screwdriver. So again, you have a 90 degree hold there so you can get some better torque on it or you have a inline 180 degree, which will allow you to spin it faster. On the inside here, you have two cuts. One is for a five millimeter and then it reduces down to a four millimeter. So it uses four millimeter bits and you can also use that as a four millimeter and five millimeter nut driver, which um, isn't gonna help you with a car, but for computers, very useful. Um, the standoffs, the hard drive uh, nuts and bolts are typically a four or five millimeter um, socket. So as a cyber tool, it was designed for the cyber world releasing in 2000, I believe, maybe uh, late 90s. So this was very much designed with um, technologies in mind. So you have both of those there and it allows you to use a double-sided bit. Now, Victorinox went ahead and engineered a bit tray. So you can carry up to eight specialty screwdriver bits in addition to the one, two. Uh, this one doesn't have the other one. I'm used to the Cybertool L. So the two standard flatheads on board plus up to eight specialty tips. Um, there are different varieties, but this one's going to be, I believe, a four and a one, a four Allen and a one Torx. We have, I believe, the two and three for the Torx. A large and small Phillips and the larger and flathead. Now I believe there are nine different interchangeable bits. So depending on the model you get, or you can buy them separately through Victorinox, you can set it up for whichever um, tips you think you're gonna be using throughout the day. What I'll usually do with mine is the flathead gives me the best grip for getting this tool deployed. So I'll leave the flathead in there. It gives me something to get my finger under and I can pull it out. You'll notice with the bit tray that they left this lip here. And what that does is when your cyber tool is closed, that tip cannot accidentally walk itself out because you have a mechanical stop there. So I've never lost a bit and that is in part to, to due to the engineering that Victorinox already built into the tool. Now I have had this tool tray start coming loose in that if I were to put one of these bits in there and shake it pretty aggressively, they would start to walk. So what I've learned to do is um, twofold. One, each one of these are held in with a ball detent. So I just make sure that the ball detent is pointing up towards the scale. And that constant resistance is enough to hold them in place. Another thing I've done is I've warmed up a cup of water for about two minutes in a microwave. And I've lowered just this plastic portion into that hot water for about five minutes. After that point, I used a pair of pliers and just crushed down on the uh, two sidewalls here. And that has reduced the diameter of each one of those ports. So I can now push them in and they will not be going anywhere. With the 91 millimeter knives, Victorinox has included some spine tools. So on the back here, we have a reamer, punch, and sewing awl. And as you can see, we have a very sharp edge here. You can make holes in plastic or tarps or uh, various other materials. And if you rotate, you can actually start carving a hole and basically use this as a drill bit. Um, so you could get eh, about an inch and a half, really. 
deep of a hole and you have a sewing needle eye here where you can use it to sew some material together um, out in the field, uh, tarps or leather or something like that. Also pretty good as a uh, box cutter. And that's a good way to make sure that you don't get adhesive and residue and um, chemicals on your main blades by using your awl. We have what some would argue is the least useful tool. This is a parcel hook. Um, Switzerland, uh, when these were designed 125 years ago, used to uh, use string to wrap up their mail and packages and stuff. And a uh, tool for helping with that is this parcel hook. This will hold up to 200 pounds. There are other YouTube videos where someone will hang this from a uh, rated hook out in their garage. They'll hold on to this and they will do pull-ups, lifting their own 200 pound self with this parcel hook and it has done no damage to the tool. I find this very useful for removing trailer hitches from my car. Uh, you have the retention pin and you have a uh, pin that goes into that one to prevent the retention pin from going anywhere. It's kind of difficult to reach under the car to get to it. And once you get to it, you don't really have the leverage to pull on it. With this, you can hook onto it. You could get four fingers on it instead of cutting one finger into that uh, sharp piece of metal and remove the pen. So I find that rather useful. We also have a corkscrew. In the corkscrew, we have a mini flathead screwdriver. This is used uh, particularly on this guy. I believe it's mentioned as a dip switch flipper. Um, so in computers, you have dip switches where you can get some behind the scenes stuff or you can reprogram something. And this is of the right shape and size to activate those dip switches. We also have, for those keen observers, a push pen stored in the scale. This is good for popping things, uh, cleaning contacts on batteries, um, stuff of that nature. And it's stored right there inside the scale. So these are essentially plus scales. And what makes them plus is typically they will only have a toothpick. Again, in a previous video, I showed that you can paint these and I recommend that you do. Uh, you typically only have a toothpick and a pair of tweezers as part of the scale tools. The plus scales will add a ballpoint pressurized pen, like a space pen, and we'll add the push pen, as we've already covered. Uh, obligatory demonstration of the pen. So you can use it to write the things. Uh, kind of small, but what you can also do with the parcel hook, lift that up, put that under the hook, lower the hook down onto it, and now you have a much larger writing implement to do a little bit finer detail writing. The last thing I've done with this knife is I've added a clear hook. So you can get nine of these for $1.25 at Dollar Tree. And I find them very useful because if you have a pocket, you can put this in your pocket. And depending on the height you set it to, it can be sticking out of your pocket so you can easily grab it and get to it. It won't go down to the bottom of your pocket and turn sideways on you and scuff against your leg and all that stuff. It can sit quite proudly, again, depending on the height you want. The trick I found with that is I will typically open up my rear scale implements. I will butt the hook up against those implements, tape it into place. It comes with um, double-sided foam tape there. And that will allow me to continue to get access to and fully open and deploy my scale tools while giving me the benefit of a way to store 
the tool in a pocket. The other benefit here is since it's foam tape, you do have a little bit of wiggle, a little bit of shake. And when you open these tools, these are the um, springs that will allow them to snap and stay open. Every time I move that spring, I would be breaking glue that would be holding a hook on. Since this isn't glue and it's foam, and by nature, it has a little bit of flex and give to it. I have not had to replace this hook through uh, about two years worth of usage. It's nice and small. As you're using it, you get a little bit of a um, finger stop or extra grip tactile hold as you're using the tools with, again, the benefit of being able to store it in your pocket without it going to the bottom of your pocket. So that's my review of my CyberTool M or CyberTool 34. This is a 17 year old at time of recording model. So you can see the scuffs and scars and usage on this guy and it continues ticking. Um, prized possession of mine, uh, hopefully will be passed on to my son when he is of age and won't destroy it himself. So, um, do any of you guys carry a Victorinox? If so, when did you start carrying it and what is the oldest one that you have in your rotation? I'm curious to hear. Uh, considering the price point on these guys, I'm pretty sure I paid about 35 euro 17 years ago when I bought this guy. I'm sure those prices are no longer um, so affordable. But considering the price of these guys and their prevalence over in Europe, um, I am pleased with how long these have survived. I don't think I've had any rust or corrosion on any of them so far. Um, at worst, I've had missing scale tools or depleted pins, but um, I'm curious to hear from your guys' experience. What model do you carry? How long have you had your oldest model, and have you had any issues with them? Leave that in the comments section below. I appreciate your guys' time, as always, and I will catch you in the next video.